program. Yep. So one of the most critical aspects of using a bandsaw is obviously the blades that you use. And usually when people have trouble with bandsaws, they think it's the saw and often it's the blade. Okay. The blade gets dull, you have to push too hard, you're, uh, you're wondering whether you're using the right kind of blade, the right number of teeth. And of course then there's the whole question of tensioning the blade, right? which is what you'll have a wheel somewhere on your saw that will allow you to tension the blade and tighten use the saw. So how do you know what that tension should be then? Well, the, the uh, people who sell bandsaw blades give people advice with respect to blades. And if you're sawing one inch or two inch wood, just cutting it flat on the bandsaw, yep. the, the recommended tensions for most of the common blades are in the eight to 10,000 pound range. Okay. Right. Now your blade, the gauge that you have on your saw won't say thousands of pounds. It'll say one, two, three, or four. It'll have some number but it probably won't list the tension in those values. If, on the other hand, you're using your bandsaw to resaw wood, then you're cutting a much thicker section of wood, and you need higher tensions on the blade. So higher tensions per ripping? For, for, for resawing. For resawing. For resawing, which is usually a ripping cut. Okay. Yeah, right. But you're, you're, you're moving a lot more of the blade through the wood, so you need higher pressures. You also need a really sharp blade. One of the problems that most people have when they resaw is they're using a blade that isn't really sharp. Um, the blade's dull, so it tends to heat up. And of course, what goes first when you heat up a piece of steel is the little tiny, tiny points on the end of the blade, so the blade gets worse and worse and worse. And it gets, as it gets heated up, it probably gets looser as well a little bit too, doesn't it? Yeah, it will. Um, you have to push the wood through a lot harder, right? So if you're into those sorts of situations, you probably need not to tension your blade more, but you need to probably put a sharper blade in. Okay. Okay. Now, for resawing on most of these common saws, like this is an 18-inch saw, a lot of people use 15-inch uh, saws. There's a lot of the Delta 14-inch saws around. But if you're resawing wood on a bandsaw, the kinds of pressures that you want on the blade are in the neighborhood of 10,000 to 15,000 pounds. Okay. If you're going to get up into a three-quarter inch or a one-inch blade, you probably want pressures of about 20,000 pounds. Now, that's nice to say, but a lot of these saws won't tension a blade to that amount. As the blade gets wider and wider and wider, yep. you have a bigger piece of steel. Right. It takes a lot more structural rigidity in the bandsaw frame to be able to pull right. that kind of pressure. Yep. Right? Most saws will probably max out in the neighborhood of 20 to 25,000. Okay. Let's say an 18 inch saw like this, 25,000 pounds is probably the most you're going to be able to pull. So if you've got your bandsaw tightened right up and you feel it's really tight and you twing the blade and it just sings like a guitar string yeah. and you're having trouble, yeah. you should probably change blades. Okay. You probably need a, not a thicker okay. blade or a thinner blade, you probably need a sharper blade. Okay. A lot of people, when they're resawing, I mean, the old school of thought was um, the wider and wider the blade, the better for resawing because you think it would track well. Right. Quite a number of very accomplished woodworkers will resaw with half inch blades. They're less expensive, you can get good tension on them, and if they're sharp, they will do an excellent job. Okay. Right. That's not that. A three-quarter inch blade wouldn't, yeah. but as you get into three-quarter inch blades or even one inch blade, I have a carbide one inch blade for this saw, which is a very expensive blade, $120, $130. Yeah. Um, you don't use that for everyday use. You right? okay. use that for special wood where you know there's no nails. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this, this gauge then is to help you determine the tension of different widths of blades. That's right? correct. Okay. Yeah. What the procedure that we're going to go through you should do, when you borrow the gauge from the guild, yeah. and it's in the guild's inventory as a loaning gauge, yeah. you should borrow it, and when you borrow it, you should have on hand all of the common blades that you're going to use in your shop. Okay, so and you should strain each one separately, and we'll demonstrate this. Okay, so quarter inch, inch, half inch, three quarter inch, inch half. Yeah. I'm all those ready, yeah. and uh, so you'd use this gauge on each one of those blades then? That's correct. Okay, and you'd fill out a little table. Okay. And um, maybe it would be appropriate for us to move the camera around and show people what the table looks like so they understand the process okay. and where the numbers are going to go. Before we do that, let's just relate this gauge to the gauge that's on everyone's.
salt. Okay. okay. Now, some of the old deltas may not have anything like this at all on them, in which case this may be a mute point and it may be something that's not worth doing. On those but things. I think almost every bandsaw has some sort of gauge on it somewhere, even if it's on a dial, it helps, gives you a, a gauge of what the tension for that saw right. is. And, and some of them are on the back side here, right. I guess on that side, the exposed side, yeah. and there's compression of the, of the spring and everything else there, yeah. and you, there's, you, there may be something, in the, there may be a little lever that yes. goes up and down like this and yeah. indicates what's going on. Now what, what happens with the delta saw, for example? Well, on the delta saw, if you've got a delta and, and you have the exposed nut and, and spring assembly on the back side, and you've got a big knob up here, and you right. turn it down, and there's no dot, there's no indicator, there's no needle. You can gauge where you are by how compressed the spring is. Right? So you could do a little, you could do a little calculation and figure it out for yourself. But I think the one thing you'd want to do is you'd want to take for each of the blades you use on that saw, and a quarter inch and three eighths and half would be the common ones. Yeah, you'd want to. Tighten that nut right down so yeah. that the spring was completely compressed yeah. and record what your maximum pressure okay. was. Okay. Then at least you've got some sort of a ballpark to proceed from. Okay. Is that fair? Yep, that's good. Okay. So now to So on a saw like this, where you've got a gauge, right? What essentially you're going to do is you're going to compare the numeric values on your gauge, whether it's a, a number of gauge like this or it's a percent okay. or something else, to the values that you're going to get here. Okay. So you dial a certain number here. Yeah. Record what you've got here on this little table that we're going to show people. Yep. You fill that out for each of the blades, and then you're good to go. Okay. Let's uh, have a look at that. Let's page. look at the table. Okay. Let's look at the table first, so people know what they're.